start without Ty <laughs> and Ryan. See the FFA here. They might not be coming. We lost John too, it looks like. And That's the mail's not gonna be here. Who? It's coming from them. She's there. Confirmed. She's here. She's here? Yeah. yeah, she's right there, right behind. Okay, you're good. All right. We're on. Are you ready? Can I start? You got the delay done? All right, welcome. This will be the meeting of the Uinta County Commission on February 27th, 1924. We had technical. 1924. How about 2024? <laughs> I just lost a few years. All right. Um, we had a few minutes. Uh, it's 3.02. We had a few technical problems getting the recorder to work. But we're now going full speed. Uh, if you haven't, please silence your phones which I haven't either. And make sure you sign in in the back before you leave if you have not. Today we have Matt Crozier with the prayer and Becky Richards with the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Very nice. Appreciate it. Okay, our first order is approval of minutes of February 12th, 24 work session and February 13th, 24 commission meeting. I'll make the motion motion to approve them. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two, report of warrants. Mr. Wilkins. Commissioners, I have two sets of warrants. First one is February 14th, 2024, in the amount of, I should have folded that page over, $1,114,784.47. There was a few, several of these, it was one-time things. Uh, we purchased a new dryer for the gel at $28,578. We also 
paid for a new sound system at the indoor arena for 64474 We had a payment to BHI on the Western Park remodel, $473,645.29. Also new flooring at Western Park for $114,444. And that is all on that one. The next one was February 22nd, 2024 in the amount of $1,058,845.86. The big one on this and Commissioner was Cigna was slow at getting our invoices for our health insurance for this year. So this has January and February's health insurance premium, which is $647,638. We do have two claims. First one is check number 390681 uh, to Motivosity. $5,378.88. Next check number is 390666 to Jackson Group Peterbilt for $5,284.15. And that's all of them. Okay, I cannot write that fast. So can you please tell me what the amount was on Motivosity yes. and the Peterbilt one? Sure. Motivosity, $5,378.88. Jackson Group Peterbilt, $5,284.15. Okay, thank you. Okay, do I have a motion? Well, I know what Motivosity was. Do you know? And I know Peterbilt's trucks, I guess. Yeah. Do we know what I'm that was? I'm not sure. <laughs> it was a turbocharger core exchange was part of it and the kit to rebuild it. I don't remember why they didn't get purchase order or anything on that, but okay. it was processed for payment without a purchase order. Okay, thank you. And okay. I have another silly question. You kind of skipped past it, but do you mind repeating the amounts of the warrants? I wrote them down, but I yes. wanted to make sure I got them right. Okay, February 14th. Amount of one million one hundred fourteen thousand seven hundred eighty-four dollars and forty-seven cents. Okay. You want February twenty-second? Mm -hmm. February twenty-second in the amount of one million fifty-eight thousand eight hundred forty-five dollars and eighty-six cents. Eighty-six. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the. Certified list of claims as presented. Second. All right, do we have a vote? Aye. 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 Okay, any tax matters, Mike? I don't have any. Barbara does. Okay, Barbara. I am requesting a refund in the amount of $6,196.13. On business personal property, account number 5803 out of Tax District 1, receipt number 17884. And uh, this <coughs> personal property account, uh, the accountant um, reported the assets and he reported them in error. These are, they are modulars and they were exempt. They went to the tribe over on tribal property for their health center. So I need okay. that. Any questions? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the personal tax refund as presented by Barbara for $6,196.13. I'll second. Okay, vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Looks like we'll have to skip over the next okay. one. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Division of Wildlife Resources Annual Pilt Payment. Miles, we like people that bring money. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, Miles Hamburg, Utah Division of Wildlife. I'm the regional supervisor for this region. So, yeah, I'm here to bring, uh, bring you guys some money. So, uh, this is the payment, the annual payment for uh, payment in lieu of taxes for Division of Wildlife Resources owned lands in, in Uinta County. Uh, I'll just briefly read a short letter from the director. It says, enclosed is a check for the year 2023 contractual in lieu payment 
uh, on land the Division of Wildlife Resources owns in Uinta County. The money used to pay the in lieu tax is provided largely by hunters and anglers in your county and across the state. And these lands are important to wildlife and to the many hunters and anglers in Uinta County. And I appreciate the Commission's support as a partner in managing Utah's wildlife. Um, did I read the, the amount to you guys? No. Okay, it's uh, $9,674.62 as the, the, the payment. Hey, I'm slow, Miles. Remember, say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. $9,674.62. Thank you. Um, also, part of the, the packet that uh, they provided has kind of a summary sheet of the Watershed Restoration Initiative. In this past year, it just talks uh, about a few things that were done. There was over $37 million invested statewide, uh, and that was almost 150,000 acres of, of work that was completed last year th throughout the state. Uh, Uinta County, there was nearly 3,000 acres of, of uh, restoration work done in this area as well. So a lot of investment going into, into the county and, and other areas across the state through the Watershed Restoration Initiative. And unfortunately, the, the winter last year kind of delayed a lot of the work, so there's a lot of that was carried over, but uh, I think we'll have a lot of a lot of good work uh, upcoming this year as well. So anyhow, so does you guys have any questions for me while I'm here? You know, on the, uh, is that counting the lop and scatter? Is that what? Yeah, the, lop and scatter. You know, they, uh, uh, Miles, and I'm not sure, it, may, it must not work, but you know, when you, you chop down Russian olives, you paint them and they never come back up Yeah. with something. I don't know if that, I keep wondering, I see this every seven years out there. They come in and cut them down, roughly seven years. But I'm just thinking, what if they painted them like they do the Russian olives with that rope no maybe? I know. I'd like a tord on. Tord on. Yeah. <coughs> Would yeah. that cure them from having to come back every seven years and do them again? You know, it, it, it could, uh, especially I if they're know. re-sprouting. But sometimes yeah. they're just new ones coming up from yeah. seed, too. Well, so you have a little yeah, bit Most of, of them, you know, have, by this fall, the ones they cut down last fall, they'll yeah. be this tall. Yeah. You know, and I just thought, man, live if they had cut this winter, you know, yeah. they'll uh, they just, I didn't know if it'd work or not, but it just, I thought, man, live, that'd be great if they'd just paint them. Paint those. And yeah. Was, That's a good idea. every seven years, they have to come back in and redo them, you yeah. know, and stuff. That, and it might not work <laughs> either. But anyway, yeah, just calm Something to check into a little more, so. Yeah. Anything else for me? Nope. Just well, thank the director and thank you guys for your hard work, because I know it's, it's a lot of work in the areas you go some places are hard to get to yep. and I know as a commission we appreciate it but as a hunter I really appreciate it uh -huh. thank you so thank you guys for what you do it's very very helpful okay yeah well thank you for letting me take a few minutes of your time thanks right. miles. thanks miles do we have to approve that or anything or it's just a report on what just a report is okay yeah. Yeah. okay miss Silcox county fair <laughs> contract <laughs> Melanie Silcox with Western Park. I have the Utah Horse Pullers Association uh, 2024 contract that would be for the Uinta County Fair for the uh, Friday night performance, so August 16th. Um, they would guarantee at least 12 sets of teams to come in. Um, they would bring in the stone boat, their announcer and everything that they have. This would be the third year that we would do it. It has been growing, I think it's a great aspect of the fair. Um, the cost is $7,000 uh, to bring them in. John Sturmer has reviewed this contract. Um, the only thing that he had requested is that I have them add that they would bring in their $2 million general aggregate insurance, which is added to the contract, and she has signed it. <laughs> okay. Any questions? No, no questions, really. I mean, I just... I don't know how you guys put this fair together every year, and if is there a committee that does the fair, or how does that work? I mean, so, yeah, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of committees. We put those committees together and then divvy things out and then kind of oversee those committees and meet with them and make sure things are rolling smoothly. But, yeah, there's a whole bunch of volunteers that help us, and... We appreciate those volunteers. Without them, we definitely couldn't put that on. Oh, for sure. I just didn't know if you guys had ever done 
any kind of survey or anything to just, you know, when people come to just say, do you like the fair? You know, a few questions. What would you like to see at the fair? What do you like about the fair that's here or anything like that? So we do post on Facebook as far as that, but we haven't done like an official survey like that they come in like a QR code type scan or something mm -hmm. that maybe we haven't done that. We have just done uh, Facebook type okay. surveys. And this is only one of a couple big event things that we do, right, at the fair? Yeah, so each night we try to have one large event brought in. Um, so Thursday night we typically try like the concert or something to kick it off. Friday night um, the horse pulls and then Saturday night we bring in something else. This year would be the BFO um, for this year. Do we have an idea who's going to be our performer on Thursday night? I don't. Um, we've been working with Steve Evans, definitely going a different route than we would last <laughs> Thank <year>. you. <laughs> um, so um, I don't know. I'm sure you guys are excited about that, but I'm extremely excited to go a different route. <laughs> yes. So um, I think, it, yeah, we're, he's trying to get numbers for us so that we could propose to him and see if that works. So Good. Okay. Do I have a motion? Oh, you're on. Okay, I'll I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the Unit County Fair contract for the horse pools for the amount of seven thousand dollars. That's presented. I'll second. Okay, vote. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank we you. We appreciate you guys supporting us to do the fair. Sam. Mr. Passy from the from Colorado, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or Colorado man. <laughs> you getting pretty short. Can you reach that microphone, or do we need to put it down for you? <laughs> hey, um, this is the State Library Division's grant annual grant to the Library Community Library Enhancement Fund grant. It's funded as a line item by the state legislature. So thanks to our legislative representatives for including this in the in the budget. This is in the amount of $10,401. It may be used um, by the library for purchasing of books and materials to check out for the public, to the public, technology for public use, programming such as community outreach, or retrofitting the library building for ADA compliance. That's not an issue for us. Or minor capital projects, and this is what I suggest such as updating furniture, carpet, paint, and minor repairs. We're 11 years into the building, and um, we're well underway of repainting some of the surfaces in there, and I imagine this grant can help cover quite a bit of those uh, touch-up expenses. But asking for authorization of electronic signatures by myself and uh, Mr. Wilkins. <coughs> Have any questions? No. Do you have a motion? Way to go. Way to get these grants that help us make our library better. Thank you. Thank you. And it's a part of the State of, library, State of Utah's library certification program, which we've maintained, and um, their consultant will be up in the next little bit to help outline that process going forward. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the li 2024 library CLEF contract in the amount of 10,401. I'll second it. A vote? Aye. 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 All right, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Sam. We appreciate you and the good work you've done over there. And Thank you. It's been great. I just, just in case, does everybody in the audience know what we're clapping about other than the employees? Um, Mr. Passy has accepted a position in Colorado and will be leaving the library. So we just want to wish him well, even though we want to rope him and keep him here. We, we wish him well and his family, but we will miss him and we have greatly appreciated everything he has done for this community and for the library over the last 16, 17 years. 16, 7, 16, almost 17 2007. years. 2007. Yeah about 17 years and we just want to thank him immensely for everything he's done and what he's brought to this community. Thank you. It's been an honor and a privilege. Yep. We have a great loss. Get big shoes to feel, sir. Yes.
Make sure you leave your home phone number so we can call you with all our issues. <laughs> they've got they've got my number. I'll be I'll be I'll appear on weekends for the next few months. Great. Until we get relocated. But thank you all and, and thanks to everyone. We've my family's really enjoyed our time out here. Thank you, Sam. How was your mother in law on the move? Wasn't it your mother in law that lives in the, yeah. I kinda figured we had you roped here when she moved out here. <laughs> okay, item number nine, the RFP award. We'll table. Number 10, Becky, Indigent Capital Defense Council Service Contract Adem. Hi, Commissioners. Becky Richards from Uinta County Public Defender's Office. This is an addendum to the contract for Indigent Capital Defense Council services between the UNTA Indigent Defense Funds Board and defense attorneys. The original contract was signed in March of 2021. This is an addendum to that contract regarding the compensation for um, the attorney fees. And we need to ask for a ratification of a signature on the addendum. I think we made this clear in the meeting yesterday that this was increasing the compensation, but it doesn't increase the cost to us, correct? Um, I don't know the answer to that. No. Mike was, Mike answered that in the work session meeting, but I don't know the answer to that. I don't believe it does. I think under the contract, I, IDC is picking it up. That was my understanding. I don't know how the underlinings so. work on that. Okay, do we have a motion? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a motion that we approve the Indigent Capital Defense Council service contract addendum as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ryan. Cyber Center State <coughs> and Local Cyber Grant Program, MOU. I just had a question why he's setting up. I know on other boards and that that I've sat on, um, when it, we approve something that deals with money, they usually ask for a roll call vote. Do we not have to do that with the commission? Legal? No. No. Is it different commission. because? I think maybe special service district <laughs> has a, a weird rule or something like that, but no, counties don't have to. Okay, Commissioners, uh, Ryan Matson, Uinta County IT. Uh, this is a uh, memorandum of understanding between the Utah Cybersecurity Center and Uinta County. Uh, this is... Ryan, turn that television on, would you? Sure. I'm trying from here because it works. I think you got to stand on your head and use your toes or something. wouldn't have anything to do with the power outage we had the other day for just a minute, would it? Yeah, that could have been it. Did you get it on your little TV? It's entering power save mode when I just turned it on. <laughs> You 
you guys haven't either. My TV isn't playing well. Yeah, it's not recognizing anything from the computer. All of the monitors. Is that one over there? I'll do my best on this presentation, and then I'll go see if I can reset the... Uh, the TVs for Matt Kazir's portion of things. Um, but uh, basically, it's a memorandum of understanding between the Utah Cybersecurity Center and Uinta County. Um, the federal, uh, federal government has a grant program uh, for cybersecurity in the different states, and the state has, is participating in it. We have also participated in it locally. We applied for it, received uh, some money for some backup, backup equipment for it as well. Um, but the state is allowing us to participate in, in their program of it. Basically, it comes with uh, a program that uh, is, is advanced antivirus. It's a managed detection response antivirus program. Um, it also gives us a number of vulnerability checks inside of our network, and then it can offer us some security training. And then the last thing that it offers is... Um, uh, phishing, uh, phishing campaign tests. So basically where um, some bogus emails go out through the county employees and we try to catch them in a, in a, in a gotcha situation. So, but we hope that we catch them before something bad actually does catch them. Uh, so what I'm requesting is, is either for uh, the chairman to sign uh, its electronic signatures or requesting that I can initial and electronically sign uh, the document, it was discussed yesterday in the work session that we would participate in uh, the Utah Cybersecurity Security Message Campaigns, the email phishing campaigns, and that we would allow, we would like the Utah Cybersecurity uh, Security Operations Center to act as an emergency backup contact for S1 Vigilance Escalations. S1 is Sentinel-1. Um, and those were discussed yesterday, basically just saying that we will take all of the options that they're giving us. So, any questions? Okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, with the signature, is it all right if Ryan signs? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Make a motion. Yeah. All right, I'd make a motion. We go ahead and approve the Cyber Center uh, grant program, the MOU, with the authorization to have uh, Ryan electronically sign it. I'll second. Do I have a vote? Aye. 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 Okay. Item 13, ordinance number 1204-2301 is tabled. We got that number no, one, we got 12. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do 12. Crystal, you're on. So I've already got it pulled up here. I'll, I'll do some of the presentation okay. and Crystal's able for some questions and different things like that. Um, so commissioners, this is an interlocal agreement uh, for the Motorola Flex public safety Thank system. Uh, Motorola Flex is formerly known as Spillman. Uh, it is what our uh, law enforcement uses. And in this, a in this area, that also includes adult parole and probation. Uh, Daggett County, Duchesne County is coming on board uh, end of March or middle mid-March. Naples City, Roosevelt City, Uinta Animal Control and Special Service District, Uinta Basin Central Dispatch, Uinta County ourselves, Utah Highway Patrol, and Vernal City. Um, just some background on this. Um, we've been providing the server and the equipment for this server for quite some time uh, with the help of Uinta Basin Central Dispatch. And this agreement is just out there now to start getting input and to start getting uh, some cost sharing uh, for that server and for the maintenance that goes into keeping that server and everything else along that. Um, for today, we have the document uh, prepared to send out to all the other entities, and we just want to make sure that everybody's on board with that. Attorney Sturmers, check this. Yes. Yeah, so 
Can, can I just jump in? Certainly. And um, have a little bit of a discussion. So two parts. We, we've been making a lot of good progress on this draft um, over, the, over the past few business days. Uh, one question I have as far as the agreement, Crystal, so really two questions. One is now that we have clarified who has voting authority on the committee and all that kind of stuff, is there really a, is, is there a distinction that we need to make between partner agency and shared agency? Or should we just have a distinction on host agency and have the, all, all the other ones just be participating agencies? The only reason I think that we should have Uenta Central Dispatch as a partner agency versus a host agency is they're very involved in a lot of the geo-validating stuff, and they will instigate stuff separate from us that we can adhere to. So they have a separate role in terms of moving forward on things than anybody else does. Plus, they also have the the monies that they can use that everybody pays into. So they will frequently, like for example, at one point in time, uh, Central Dispatch chose to pay for all the partner <laughs> and us to have the touch application. So they step up and are more of a partner than a sharing. And that's the just, and I think that we should maintain that distinction because okay. they do that. So okay. Does that make sense? So yeah. we have them in both places then, as a sharing and a partner? Um, they, they, I think they can just be a partner agency because it uh, addresses partner agency, shared agency okay. as separate. But they, to me, I'm trying to not talk with my hands. Um, they, uh, they, like I said, she, Lakana Davis as the dispatch super came and she says, okay, we're doing geolocating. They're one of the places, one of the agencies that has been instrumental, helpful, and will move things forward on their own accord for their for their for our use, not just for their use. Oh, I agree. I so. just meant for signing. They're on here twice, so oh. I didn't know if we need them on here twice or just the partner one. I would just think that would be more of a it John be, question. It would be just one. Okay. So we can we can make that correction. Okay. Um, and then my other question. Let me get down onto the compensation. On the. Okay, so. The draft agreement that we were going off of had a per a per user amount, and we still we still want to do that per user amount, but we don't want to put the actual numbers in the document because that's a running that's a moving target, right? So do so, we do we know how much? So for the for the entities to sign this and then be obligated to pay amount, we we need to know what that dollar amount would be. It could be a percentage of a whole or it could be a variable but based off of a dollar amount per user okay but, so, but somehow we need to have them bound to an actual an actual dollar amount mm. um, or somehow define the costs or so that's where I was a little confused in 5.1 on the hosting fee because it says at 15% of all costs incurred but then it's not also that number isn't tying to what the partner and the other I mean, it's entities hard to would be paying. Amount because they'll have time <coughs> service, right? So whatever the cost that we purchased that year for that previous year is going to be the amount that we apply on July 15th. So it's going to be, let's just say we have 200 users. Is the mic picking her up? Just Oh, sorry. My bad. My bad. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure. Um, we have we buy, we don't know what that amount is going to be because we don't know what we're going to buy. We can give them an estimate at the meeting based on this is what we've purchased this year. And then it's based on the total number of users on the system. So each agency has a list of authorized users. We add that up and then we divide by the number of users per agency to figure out their percentage. I know that's kind of, it's. So what is the, what is the 15% then? The 15% will be. Like the amount, the total amount of whatever we spend, and their percentage off of there, by 15% of the total amount of whatever we spend divided across those agencies by their percentage. A thousand dollars, 15% is 1,500, right? 150. 150. Thank you. I always misplace zeros. 150, and then each person will have, if they have 10%. There'll be 15, 10% of $150 will be their share of that 
we didn't know another way to spread to, to, to take the a cost that we're spending on the equipment and apply it to the maintenance and time that we spend on it. And keeping track of time is not going to be a, a viable method to do that. Go ahead. Step as far as getting a final finite amount, I think the ideal scenario would be is, is that we take whatever our costs are. In this case, we already kind of know what our costs are going to be this year. Um, so we could easily begin with our costs this year, divide amongst the agencies, or basically we take our cost, we add 15% onto the top for maintenance and for our time to manage the server, right. power, miscellaneous that way, okay. and then we divide that out amongst all of the users. Okay, so, okay, that, that makes sense. So what we need to do then is just put in some based off a of percentage of all users right, that per agency. So we need, we need a sentence in there that states that, that it's 100% of cost plus a 15% admin addition, and then each agency will pay based off percentage of users. That's exactly. Okay, so perfect. Okay, now, Mr. Chair, can I suggest a motion then? Right that was the only questions one. I had on it. If we could have a motion to approve the agreement as presented and discussed by IT in the attorney's office, then we'll just make that change and get it to them for signature. Everything else looks great, but if we can just clarify that part in the document. Can I just say as so presented? Moved. So moved. <laughs> just, <laughs> okay. just what I said. <laughs> My only concern is um, <coughs> that the other agencies have attorneys haven't had a time to look at it. So I just, I've, I've voiced this before. I'm just concerned that we're going to go through all of this and then it's going to come back and have changes and we'll just have to redo it. Is there a way we can say we approve this form as far as we're concerned from Uana County and let's send it out and then once it's finalized, we'll make a final approval? Or do you want to approve it now? I'm just afraid it always changes once the attorneys look at it. Yeah, I mean, how we've done it before is we just get approval of this document. If there's no changes, then we just get it signed. If there are changes, we're going to have to bring it back to a commission meeting anyway to discuss those changes. So we, we would, there wouldn't be any need to, to qualify today's motion. It would just be a new agenda item coming forward. The other thing you could do is just say, well, let's table this. We like where this is going, fire it out to everybody, and then wait for the responses to come back so we won't take any action today. But trying to trying to get it to, I, I know sometime in March, Crystal, you the, the whole team is wanting to operate under this new thing. So um, we were seeing if we can get it to signature faster. But we could do it that way, Commissioner Norton, if you well, would like. Well, in the interest of time, if, which I think it will be a miracle if an attorney doesn't want to tweak this somehow, but in the interest of time, I'm okay with approving it right now. That way, if they don't, then we can get it signed and move forward. Okay, I got a motion to that, I think. Yeah. Right. So I'll, There's a motion I'll on second. the floor for that. I second it already. Okay, thank you. I'm misheard. Okay, do I have a vote? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. All right, we're tabling to 13. Matt, you're on. Dylan Atwood rezone from <coughs> G1 to A1. Okay, uh, perfect. So, <clears throat> let's see, this is a see sorry got to turn the page okay so this is a rezone um, the applicant was Dylan Atwood requesting to rezone property from MG1 to a1 uh, the property is owned by Ned and Linda Oaks and located at 8001 East Brush Creek Road in the Jensen area it's serial number 5 24 And let's see. Um, actually, I don't have anything on this one here because we went over it all yesterday. Um, the rezone, this application was uh, presented to the Planning Commission at a public hearing. 
um, this past Wednesday, and the Planning Commission uh, did recommend approval of the rezone to from MG1 to A1, and there were no public comments at the public hearing. Okay. I I would make a motion that we approve the Dillon Atwood rezone from MG1 mining and grazing to A1, which is agricultural, on serial number 5143-24. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's go to flag lots. Okay, this is ordinance uh, 02 26 202401. Uh, this is amendments to section 17.27.110 flag lots. Um, <clears throat> and again, this one was discussed at the work session yesterday, kind of in depth, went through each change. Um, are there any other questions or do you want me to go through those changes again? Um, it is in ordinance form now. Um, I, I sent that to uh, each of the commissioners and John earlier today. Um, the, the body or what the changes in it didn't change. Um, it was just adding the language for the ordinance itself. So, um. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll uh, make the motion that we go ahead and approve this ordinance number 02262024201 amendments to section 1727110 flag lots as presented by Matt Kazir. I will second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll call for a motion to recess. To we. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we go ahead and recess for Municipal Building Authority. And upon time of that, come out and reconvene into regular commission meeting. I think so. That's got to be said. Okay. Uh, hello, Eric. Hello there. Thank you. Um, this, um, we have changed, if any of you aren't aware, I am now the chair of the MBA, and Brad is the secretary. So we have Eric Johnson here, our bond counsel, to talk to us for about resolution 227-2024 MBA 1. This is a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of not more than $620,000 taxable lease revenue bonds, series 2-2024-B, for a compactor, fixing the maximum aggregate principal amount, maturity, interest rate, and discount, providing for the publication of a notice of public hearing and bonds to be issued, providing for the running of a contest period and related matters, and I will let Mr. Johnson. Great, so the county received a, a funding authorization from the Permanent Community Impact Fund Board for a, uh, a loan in the amount of $517,000, 0% interest. And uh, the Community Impact Board, when someone is borrowing money, asks that in the parameters, which is not the actual amount of the bond, that you always put in a little extra. So even though the authorization was for 517000 the you're calling a public hearing for bonds up to $620,000, okay? And, but it is anticipated it, that, uh, that the bond will only be 517000 Just to let you know, if you were borrowing that money on the open market, you'd be paying about 5.5% right now uh, if it was taxable <coughs> and, uh, or I mean uh, tax exempt. And uh, you're saving with this funding a couple hundred thousand dollars. By, by going about it this way. So, any questions? Um, you said this isn't the public hearing, correct? No, you're calling the public hearing today. Okay. Yeah. And that's why the amount that it, for the public hearing is 620000 okay. After the public hearing in a month, you'll then 
consider whether to approve the bonds or not. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions or discussion? <coughs> Chair, I'd make a motion that we accept this resolution 02-27-24 MBA 1. Okay. Seconded. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That Great. And then you'll have a, a mere resolution for the county yeah. yes. that the MBA can only do what the county commission approves. Yep. That's number 19. Yes. Give it on. <laughs> Okay, um, other, I, that finishes our MBA business, so we will adjourn back into commission meeting. Okay, item number 19 is resolution number 2270, I'm sorry, 202272024R1, approving the adoption of the Municipal Building Authority of Uinta County, using Utah, a parameters resolution authorizing the issues and sale of not more than $620,000 tax police. Revenue Bond Series 2024B for a compactor and related matters. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have now time for a public hearing on the 2024 budget increase. Mr. Wilkins, if you would present that. <coughs> Commissioners, this is a budget increase for the 2024 budget year. Uh, resolution 227-24-R2. I'll present it and then you can uh, take public comment on it. General Fund Public Defender, $5,000. They received an additional $5,000 from the IDC as a grant. GIS, $57,000 for uh, flyover. This will come out of the general fund on that one. County Surveyor had $15,800 left over from the AGRC grant from 2023 that was not spent, so we're carrying that over. Emergency Services received an additional $1,000 from the uh, HMEP grant. And the CJC Child's Children's Justice Center, $54,900. Part of it is from the VOCA grant of $10,000 and the rest of it is from general fund to match the funds that on the Children's Justice Center. Fund 55 Western Park, capital projects 2,175,200. This is carrying over part of last year's money and recognizing the grant or the revitalization funds that Western Park will be receiving for that for the capital projects down there. So $2 million revenue from revitalization funds with 175200 coming from their fund balance of unspent from last year. All right, and the uh, public defender, that's a pass-through? That's public pass-through. 5000 Yep. Okay. Most of this is all pass-through. IDC grant, five grand, $5,000. VOCA grant of $10,000. Uh, CJC AG, AG's office, 9000 AGRC grant of 15,800, HMEP of 1,000. So if use of fund balance would be $92,900. Total that is covering for the CJC and the flyover for the GIS department. Okay, now it's time for public comment. Public comment is time is not a public debate. The county will listen to comments made and take them into consideration. This is, this is different. This no, is this is the public hearing, hearing on this one. Oh, okay. You so get to talk all you want to. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> yeah, JC, to, what you got to say? Just need to open the public hearing. Oh. This is an open public hearing. Oh. <laughs> I was getting going on this. Come on. You, you were making a run there. I was making a run. So if I read it now, they'll remember it by the end. I'll no. read it at the end. <coughs> Melissa <coughs> Fever. I just have a... A question on the budget uh, as related from 2024 we're just two months into it but I don't know if you have planned or it's part of the process to have maybe like a quarterly review where you're at incoming uh, outgoing kind of comparison make sure we're on track um, kind of a return and report kind of deal is that part of the process and that is done every month. month thank you thank you 
Yes, the commission gets that every month. What went out and what comes in. Any further public comment? Okay. Well, this go ahead, JC. Budget. This is just for the budget. This is the budget. Okay. So Seeing Chair, no further, I will public. close the public comment. Hearing. Uh, public hearing. Hearing. Yeah. That too. <laughs> now, now do a go make to accept a motion for a resolution. Now I'll accept a motion for the resolution 02270 R2, the 2024 budget increase. So moved. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right, resolution number 02272024R3, you went to Transportation Special Service District Board Appointments. Yes. The Commissioner that, Norton. Thank you. Um, we did make these board appointments in a previous meeting, but it was brought to my attention that we, this needs to be done by resolution. So therefore, we are just basically ratifying the board appointments that we made by resolution. And that's just, this is a formality. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Oh, well, we did in the previous meeting when we made the appointments, but we did. Okay, I will repeat the board appointments. So um, we have Ryan Cook, Bob Leak, Sean Labram, and Mark Raymond. And I will serve as the Uinta County representative on that <coughs> board. Okay. I have a so can I make a motion that we approve resolution two zero two? There's actually a motion already on the floor. Oh. By Commissioner Horrocks. Sorry. Sorry, Brad. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item number three is board appointments. That's me again. Um, I would like to propose that Desiree Evans be appointed to the Planning Commission as an alternate. And now we, at this time, I believe we have full, a full board and alternate, or commission and alternates. Um, her term would be as of today through December 31st of 2025. Okay. And um, I'll, I have another correction. I don't know if we need them in different motions, probably. Okay, do I have a motion on that, Ms. Evans? That, is that what she did? Was it just a motion? Well, I she guess I could say I'll make, I'll make that motion. I can, I don't know. Okay, how it I was works. taking it as a motion, but I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the other thing was a correction to an appointment that we made previously for the um, Uinta Mosquito Abatement District. We mistakenly cited that Joan Gilroy, who had passed, and they repl we replaced her with Dean Bell. We thought her term ended December 31st of 2023. Therefore, we reappointed Dean Bell till 2027, when in actuality her term does not ex would not expire till December 31st of 2024. So he is appointed till the end of her term, which would be December 31st, 2024. That was just a correction. I don't know if we have to have a motion, or do you know, John? I don't, I don't think you need a motion on that, because okay. it's just making sure that the record's clear. Okay, thank you very much. That was the only two items I had on board appointments. Okay. We'll for public comment. Holy moly. And commissioners, just as a, and for the public, we do have a. J.C. Brewer. Oh. Our crowd do, all left. Hold, hold on. I pass. Hang on, Mr. Brewer. Hang on. We do have a closed session and yep. scheduled for 4 o'clock. Okay. So if we need to Short. adjust it a little bit, but we do have that hard deadline. We're, we're pushing you. What you got, sir? 
Okay. Uh, as you folks know, I've uh, been making quite a little noise lately about the influx, I call it the invasion of this country across our southern border by communist China, MS-13 gangs, uh, immigrants from something north of 150 different countries to the tune of roughly 8 million unvetted foreigners coming into our country. Not a one of them came here to pick apples. They're here for their own personal reasons, and that's not the good of this country. So I got a, a, a idea that uh, by watching the news, and everybody here watches the news some, China and several other foreigners have figured out ways to hack our infrastructure, hack our communication systems. We're getting hacked daily by somebody. Now, our county, bless their hearts, several years ago figured out that when the power's out, our cell phones are out, we're running <coughs> blind in the dark. So they've spent quite a little money, bought a, what they call a mobile command center, set it up to help authorities in the county and law enforcement in the county all talk to each other and coordinate, deal with situations such as natural disasters, terrorist attacks, and whatnot. Okay, I can envision sometime in the next 10 or 15 years, certainly within our lifetimes, the things that I see on the news happening daily, anywhere from the southern border to New York City and all the way in between, gangs running loose, criminals coming from all the foreign countries in the world into this country, none of them with, our, or with this country's benefit in mind, just their own. We already see it, gangs ganging up and robbing people in the subways, in the streets of our bigger cities, and so forth. Bless your hearts, the county has already dealt with that with their mobile command center to coordinate, cooperate, and help uh, law enforcement and people to talk to each other and deal with these type of situations. Guess what? When our communication system is hacked, and it's going to be, and our power is put out at the same time, and it's going to be, how do we talk to each other. How do we know what's going on? How do we communicate? How do we even know who the enemy is or what's happening? Enemies during wartime wear uniforms. We shoot back and forth at each other. We know who the enemy is. In the next conflicts in this country, we're not going to know who the enemy is. The only uniform I can see any of them wearing at this date is a few of them that are showing their ugly heads in our big cities, and they're all wearing black hoodies. I wouldn't want to be wearing a black hoodie these days because in this county there's enough well-armed rednecks willing to defend themselves that a, a terrorist attack, a gang attacks like we're seeing in places, uh, hell, MS-13 has been terrorizing Long Island for years. <coughs> Those people are in this country today. They're not overseas anymore. They're here. They're here today. And as soon as they get organized, and they're organizing as fast as they can, TikTok is their communication system. That's why I'm advocating getting that banned in this country nationally. My question now, because I don't expect answers today, but I do hope everybody will listen and maybe somebody come up with a good idea. While law enforcement is running up and down the highways trying to catch the bad guys, and all of us other folks are running around the county with the lights out and our phones out. How do we communicate? How do we prevent uh, killing each other? How do we prevent uh, this mass confusion that's going to happen from working against us and working for the criminals? 
I'm looking for ideas, suggestions, anybody that's got an idea of how we can communicate, how we can organize anything that we can organize in this county to give us a chance to at least be on level ground with the thugs. I'm, I'm open to suggestions because I want to promote such a program, such a, a something to help us defend ourselves against that sort of thing. We know law enforcement ain't doing it. It's not going to happen. Every law enforcement officer in this county on duty at the same time isn't going to be anywhere near enough when a terrorist attack comes in here like we've just seen uh, in Israel. 1,200 people murdered mm -hmm. in one terrorist attack. What if that same terrorist attack enters this county, this Ashley Valley? All I'm looking for is suggestions now. Okay. Anybody on that back row? Anybody here that's got an idea? I'm I'm looking for for help on this one. Okay, I don't mean to cut you short, but we got a phone call for our closed session. It's coming in right now. Wonderful. So we need to get out of here. Wonderful. Okay. Thank but you. But thank you very much. We appreciate it. excellent question. I hope we get an answer. I do too. Be nice to know. <coughs> exactly. Thank you. Okay, we have need for a. Uh, closed session for the purpose of discussing pending or intimate litigation. We also will discuss the purpose of discussing uh, purchase exchange, lease of real property when public discussion of the transaction would be disclosed the appraisal or estimated value of the property under consideration or prevent the public body from completing the transaction on best possible terms. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion and then at time we'll <coughs> reconvene into regular commission meeting and adjourn, right? One addition, can we go to the small conference room? Small conference Yes, we will re reconvene at the small conference room. <coughs> I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you check before you leave? I don't have it, buddy. Which check? Talk to the wrong person. I already gave it to the boss. I already gave it to the boss. Okay, as long as she's got it. You know I try to stack them up over there for her. <laughs> <laughs>